happy to have you here in our studio. <laughs> and uh, we've just been listening to the concert, which was Trombona Soundscape. Um, can you tell us some more about the concept of Trombona Soundscape? Trombone, of course, is my favorite instrument, uh, as you can see in here. And I was uh, very interested by the various types of trombones uh, during the history. And uh, so today we started with the, the instrument which was right before the, uh, the discovering of the trombone, which was the trumpet de menestrel. Um, and uh, then we see the sackbuts and the evolution of the instruments through the centuries. And it's what, what I find very interesting is that every instrument has its own, uh, its own world. Right. And uh, especially when you can play it with the uh, accompaniment, which is really very close to the instrument. And uh, then you have really the sound uh, that is appropriate for that kind of instrument. And then, yeah, of course, I looked together with Joris to find a repertoire that is really very close to the making of the instrument. To the right. You just mentioned the name of Joris. We are talking about Joris Verdun. Yeah. What's his role in, in the trombone soundscape? Well, um, his role is very important because I think Joris Verdun is one of the few uh, keyboard players who are really at home on all these uh, instruments. So, he, of course, he's an organ organist, but he also plays really very good the regal, uh, all kinds of other organs. And then for the romantic works, uh, we have chosen to use the, uh, the harmonium, which I think he's the specialist of that instrument. So it's not easy to um, to find a person that can uh, be all these various types of uh, of uh, keyboard players, and Joris, uh, yeah, he's uh, very uh, flexible with all the styles and uh, with the playing techniques. Therefore, he's the ideal. Uh, he's the man. Yeah, absolutely. Very special in this program, I think, is that we uh, meet two people um, bring so many different sound patterns, soundscapes, soundscape from the uh, early, uh, late medieval or early Renaissance, Renaissance, Baroque, uh, classical, uh, romantical, and modern. That all in one concert, and therefore we use all the instruments. Uh, as many as we can uh, original instruments. For the really uh, early instruments we use copies of, uh, of, of those. And so our, our project is actually, uh, v there is a lot of variation in sound and also in music, in repertoire, because the repertoire is very linked, very close to the, the instruments. And it has, in that sort of sense, it has actually two, two main uh, elements. There is a, an educational element. Uh, for, for a lot of people, the instruments are new, and we bring them all together in one program with some um, uh, iconographical materials as well, just to show the context of the use of the instrument. That's one part. And then on the other hand, yeah, you have the artistic, uh, it has the artistic part, where uh, every instrument has its own soundscape, its own context, its own uh, way of uh, sounding in the, with the accompaniment uh, together. So that's, uh, I think, quite unique to have that in one program. We noticed that the public is able to see and even touch the instruments after the concert. 
Yeah, uh, in this program we sort of built um, an exhibition on stage. So uh, when we start there is only uh, yeah, very little on stage and one by one after each piece we, uh, we put the, the trombones on the table uh, and so uh, people can see the evolution in the instrument making and uh, can see also the difference, I can hear the difference uh, in comparison to the, the design of the instrument. Thank you.